uh, who's going to ask the first question? Anything you want, uh, whether you're from uh, government, local government, from business, from uh, teaching, universities, uh, anything you want to uh, ask, it's uh, completely open. So uh, who's, going to, uh, who's going to go first? Put your hand in the air, give me a very, very firm wave, and uh, we'll kick off things. Who's going to be brave and uh, go first? Gentlemen down here, keep your hand really high, and one of our athletic um, operatives will come and find you with a microphone. Wait, you're giving me microwave at the moment. Give me a sort of long wave, Radio 4 sort of thing. Um, keep, your wa keep waving, and we'll come over to you now. Oh, you, look, you've been mistaken. I'll take that one, because he's got a mic. And when you finish, run down here to this gentleman here, uh, and we'll have that one second. So, yes, sir, welcome. Tell us your name and your question. Hello, 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 everybody. I'm Harry Mansikkamäki from Leading, a Finnish company coming to the UK, Wales, surely. Uh, for uh, Kevin, I think this is uh, what you talked about, Internet of Things, uh, and you were addressing it pretty much from the consumer perspective, but at least I've been lately seeing a lot in, in the industrial sector as well, that that's driving it heavily, so they are putting a lot of effort on industry, uh, uh, Internet of Things, so connecting everything. How do you see that, Kevin, or anybody else in the panel? Kevin, uh, that's directed to you, so you can answer that. Then I will come to you, sir, in the front here. So if you can have our microphone run down here. Kevin, if you want to answer so, that. So, sorry, which was the particular sector in enterprise? Industry. Industry. In industry. industry. Okay. So, yeah, I, I see it making significant changes in, in, in industry as well. So, you know, maybe a couple public sector and one private sector example. So, there's now, you know, refuse rubbish containers in Barcelona have all have sensors in them. And they have sensors in them that determine, you know, when they're full and they won't be picked up until when they're full. So, that would be a simple... Uh, example, you know, back where well, I was in Canada, we have monitors on all our oil and energy stations so that you know what, you know, what the flow is, how it's working, and if there's any faults on that, you can instantly, you know, manage and control it remotely. Uh, you know, and, another example that really early stages, there's literally a pill you can take that has a SIM in it that when it goes through, through you will you know, take all sorts of reading and diagnose you. And no, we don't have to get it on the other side because it's got a SIM in it. It communicates the things that, that will tell you, you know, a full medical condition. So I, I really think in industry, it's, it's limitless. So whether it's, you know, fleet management is one of the most common early applications in business. Um, but it's really anything you can do. If you can connect to it and you can monitor it, you can manage it, and there will be an Internet of Things application for it. Thank you for your question and thank you for the answer. I'm going to come to the gentleman here uh, and tell us your name and your question, please. Uh, my name is Dan Martin. I'm a journalist. I'm editor of businesszone.co.uk. It's a website for startups. Being a journalist, I'm going to be a bit controversial. Given what Maggie Philbin said about women in tech and the fact that she was one of two women at a dinner last night and so far uh, all the speakers are men, um, what is the panel's thoughts on raising the profile of women in tech? Terry Matthews. I think the question was about females in uh, industry, and I, I will tell you that in, in my career in uh, starting up many, many companies, I've, uh, I've hired, I mean, I, I hire people irrespective of race, religion, sex, or whatever. Uh, fact of the matter is that some of the females have been the best people that I've ever hired, and uh, in my uh, number of startups today, I mean, I'm calling them startups, is about 33, I think, in total. Uh, of companies uh, varying up to about five years old, and uh, some of those uh, female CEOs are absolutely outstanding and the best in class. I'm not sure if that answered the question because I didn't totally understand it, Jamie. Well, I, I think there is broad, and for those of you who weren't here yesterday, there was great concern expressed about uh, the percentage of women going into IT. Dan, I think this is the thrust of your, your question, the amount of girls who are studying IT uh, at GCSE, who then go on to do it at A-level, who then go on to do it at university, who then go into careers. There is a general concern, not just in Wales, but across the UK. Um, Dan, let me just come back to you. I mean, I'm, I mean, let me throw it back to you in a sense. I mean, I wonder what your, your business, your, you hacks are doing about it in your particular niche journalism. I mean, I wonder how many times girls uh, are, are featured in your, in your writing and what, what you lot are doing about it. 
Uh, regularly, we actually, not, you've given me the chance to give a bit of a plug, but we run a, we run a small business competition called The Pitch, based in Bristol, which we've been doing for seven years. Entrepreneurs can pitch to win prizes. Applications open now. Um, this year, we've got four judges, and three of them are women. Um, we haven't sort of gone out necessarily to sort of positive discrimination, but we've, you know, I do try to make sure we've got gender diversity. I interviewed Maggie Philbin just after she spoke on stage, and she made the point of not sort of criticising this event, but she said maybe the questions just aren't asked when organisers go to people to speak and say, who have you got in your organisation that's really inspirational that you could have on stage? People automatically think of the person that always speaks um, and don't necessarily, you know, think a bit deeper. So I think, yeah, the media does need to play its role. I'd like to think that my website, we're quite, you know, we, we can profile women as, as much as we can. But being a journalist who goes to a lot of events, they are very, very male-dominated. So I think event organisers need to just think a bit, a bit more di diverse. Yeah, well, let's continue with this because it's clearly making everyone very uncomfortable here. So why don't we continue with it? Um, um, David, you were absolutely fascinating um, flying in here, and it was a treat hearing from you. But it, it, there is a problem. I mean, there is a problem here. I mean, what, what are you doing about it? Uh, well, um, uh, the, I agree there's a problem. Um, I'll give you one example of what we're doing. Um, some of you may have heard of a thing called Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm very proud that we manufacture it here in Wales. Um, I'm on the board and the most popular selling book for encouraging people to uh, learn how to program on the Pi is written by Carrie Ann Philbin. And we're very pleased that as Geek Girl, she promotes the notion that it's perfectly a, a, a real ambition for young girls to program. And I gave my two nieces on Sunday each a Raspberry Pi, and I said, next time I see you, I want you to have uh, written a computer program. Carrie-Anne was here yesterday as one of the speakers, I must point out, before, uh, before um, laying into the panel too much. But, but you're avoiding the question, and it's a very, very good question. Um, <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure your nieces were delighted by your generosity. Um, in well, you your, asked me what I was doing. But, but in terms of the organizations <laughs> of, uh, of which you have a huge responsibility, are you... Are you being difficult? That, that's what Maggie said on stage earlier on this morning, wasn't it? Are you being difficult and saying to boards, saying to firms, look, what are you doing to, to get girls into the workplace? What kind of role models are you throwing up here? Because blokes are very good at appointing blokes, aren't they? Uh, well, of course, everybody looks to role models. Um, I, I was with um, a good friend and colleague, Sherry Kutu, um, last night, who's one of... Uh, you know, are leading tech entrepreneurs. Um, those are people, like Sherry, who need to be promoted and need to, need to be shown as role models. She's done fantastic work uh, for the tech community. And that's the kind of thing we need to get behind. Um, <clears throat> on boards where I sit, I, you know, I, I push for um, greater representation by women because it's not just an issue of um, being, you know, straightforward positive discrimination is because you need different points of views on boards, and if they all are comprised of exactly the same background, you're not going to be functioning as well as you would do as if you had a diversity of views. But I go back to my point about Raspberry Pi, um, which is you've got to start this early. You can't just expect this to turn overnight, and we actually need to put a bit of effort into it. So I'm actually very pleased. I've, I've done one little bit, which is to encourage my nieces not just to think of um, what might be an orthodox path as they see it as eight and ten-year-olds, but they've got to think of this as a career. And if we come back here in 20 years and the composition of this audience and the composition of tech is as it is at the moment, we will seriously have failed. And we will have failed not only in not giving half the human race some opportunities to participate in this, but we will have failed because we won't be tapping into, just as I said about immigration, we won't be tapping into a full range of diversity that we need in order to be innovative. Remember when I talked about Silicon Valley? I said it was the hippies were really important. It's not the orthodox, straight, narrow, basis on which you should be doing things. You should be thinking much more creatively and giving a lot of people a chance to do something and contribute. 
Dan, we could debate this all day, but I, I'm, for the benefit of those people who were here yesterday, I, I must make it clear that vast amounts of time was spent criticising uh, this very problem and debating it yesterday. So with your permission, I'm going to move on and squeeze in some more questions, just out of fairness to, to other people. Uh, right in the front here, keep on putting your hand. Actually, I'm going to take that gentleman there. Keep your hand up high, sir, and then I will come to the front here. So we will athletically run this microphone towards you now as you keep your hand in the air. Um, keep your hand in the air and tell us your name and your question. And um, here we go, just in front there. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I'm Bob Greenland, elected councillor on Monmouthshire County Council. And if you can I? Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. What have you done to your arm? Oh, I, I fell downstairs. Okay, thanks. <laughs> uh, sorry, just interested. Carry on. <laughs> okay, okay. I'll tell you the injuries if you want a bit more. But local so. government is very rough and tumble these days, isn't it? <laughs> Not so in Monmouthshire. Um, if you were to play golf at this wonderful golf course, you'd look out over the hills and valleys of Monmouthshire. Fantastic. One of the disadvantages is the mobile coverage we get here in Monmouthshire. Absolutely appalling. Last week, I was refused a smart meter because I cannot get mobile coverage at home. Now, I heard from Kevin uh, that, I think I took it, get it right, that if, in fact, you got planning permission for higher masts, then maybe we could get better coverage in rural areas because mobile coverage in rural areas of Wales, and Monmouthshire will be amongst the 2% that don't get it, I would predict. If we were to get planning permission for higher masts in Monmouthshire, would you bring 4G to Monmouthshire? Thank you for your question. I'm just, before you sit down, I want to ask you, uh, will you, will you support building higher mass in Monmouthshire? I'm not on the planning committee, but I will lobby for exactly that thing, yes. Okay, um, thank you very much for your question. Kevin, um, Monmouthshire desperately wants you to build many more high masts. <laughs> so, absolutely. If we can work with the, the Monmouth, Monmouthshire Council and Planning Commission, and if they allow us to put higher masts, they will get preferential treatment. Oh, there we are. <laughs> Um, well, extraordinary. Um, this is going to really annoy you that I'm being given the evil eyeball from the producer, but you, what will annoy you even more is if you're late to your coffee, because we're trying to do all the choreography of getting you to coffee and lunch. It's quite a difficult logistical operation, so I'm terribly sorry, but that is the end of our discussion, because I have to get you in just a couple of minutes away to coffee. A round of applause for our panellists, please, ladies and gentlemen.